Hey kids, and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Uh, last episode, we, we were basically wandering around somewhat aimlessly because we, <laughs> uh, you know, we're trying to get by. We're trying to get the body down from the courtyard. We've been trying to uh, get access to, I guess, the dock workers. But there's this strike going on. And there's this big brute blocking the way to open the door. And I feel like because we're such a wimp, if we uh, if we open, if we try and fight that guy or something, or if we're too aggressive with him, I, I have a weird feeling that we're gonna get just killed immediately. On that note, uh, I I keep discovering it's interesting. I you know every time I play a it's been a while since I really dived into a new game blindly like this, and I find that the um, I'm just learning things about the the um, interface. So <laughs> last episode, you will have noticed that. I was clicking, I was like, oh, I don't think we can interact with the, the mug, but of course there's this big interact button here, and I, I, I actually missed that on a prior episode, I think episode two or something, I, I, I had sort of been clicking here like, oh, why can't I interact with it, but like, it's up here. And it's interesting, the interface in this game is so simple, like, it's all just left clicking and holding tab, and so, yeah, we can, we can interact with that, and I'm going to do that in just a second. Uh, other thing I've learned, uh, <laughs> And I feel like, you know, this is not a tutorial on how to play the game, uh, and, and a lot of you guys who are currently playing the game, perhaps, uh, maybe maybe just know this, it's self-evident, but F5 is also a quick save. And uh, I'm going to get in the habit of doing that because I was talking to, to a friend who's, who's playing this game as well, and, and he was saying, like, yeah, dude, it's, like, super easy to die, and if you die, like, you can lose a ton of progress, and I don't want to save scum this game. I, I want to... Uh, I want to, you know, I don't want to like save, quick save before every single check we do or something, and I'm perfectly fine with us failing checks and having that long, embarrassing conversation we had uh, over the phone about how we lost everything of value at all of our police, you know, our gun and, and all that. So, um, you know, I'm fine with not, uh, I don't want to save scum, but, but what I don't want to happen is is for us to die and get a game over and have to have to go back and just redo a bunch of things. So I will I will get in the habit of quick saving, um, but yeah. We have a bunch of stuff up. We got all, all sorts of red glowing stuff going on down here. Uh, and so I am going to, we already we already looked, interacted with the, the damage ledger. Uh, I am going to click the interact button on the yellow man mug, which we never did. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. There's quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy, here we go. What are you What are you gonna say about a broken tossaway mug that you dug out of the garbage? Uh, this mug is okay. So I I don't know what this. These seem to be maybe more about us than the mug, actually. Okay, so we we're basically deciding whether we're a, we're a racist or not here. Uh, this mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. Okay, but it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it, or do some volunteering work? Just finish your case, detective. Interesting. So that did not yield anything interesting. However, we we have this photo of the tattoos, which we can interact with. An intricate web of blue lines stretches ac across the torso of the hanged man, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisk asterisks god that's that's a hard word to say in plural asterisks riddle his skin their concentration is highest around his heart still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky but something's not right right so we looked at this earlier and we failed whatever perception check or whatever it was whatever check we had i remember that um okay still looks like a map of the stars in the night sky but something's not right uh, what's the meaning of this tattoo for you to discover you've gotten as for you to discover, you've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone who knows about history could tell you. Hmm, interesting. Who are you? Photo of tattoos gone. Okay. Well, that was not uh, all that useful, although it is kind of good, neat to know that maybe someone who knows about history will be able to help us. Try and keep that in mind. Right, so we have new tasks. We need to track down our gun. Track down our badge. Who made the call reporting the crime? Keep searching for the caller despite lacking any obvious leads. This might take some time. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, we called Sylvie and, and she denied making the call. 
So, and this is just stuff that we've done. Okay. What do we got here? Right. So, volumetric. Okay, we completed this one. Right. Okay. And then this one is still. This one has two hours and 40, 34 minutes to go. Okay. Cool. Do we have a new? We don't have any like new ideas or anything, do we? No. Oh, rigorous self-critique. Right, because we are a we are a sorry cop. Um, you're one sorry piece of shit. A cop penitent, a flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at a Mazovian show trial or ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your your own fault. Do it. Really, criticize yourself. Who knows, you might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Again, I'm not sure if we get a benefit from doing this, or if it's just... I'm, I'm not quite sure I know how these how these work. I know, like, this one is just good, right? And this one seems to be good as well, but but I'm not sure if we internalize this uh, whether whether that's going to help us or not. So yeah, looks like we can. Only, I think these unlockable ones here mean that we can only have three actives. So yeah, internalizing that might not might not be worth it. But we'll see. I'll I'll just uh, keep it in mind. Anyway, um, without oops, no, okay. It's interesting. Yeah, there's no, there's no like right click either. Like it's all, it's all left click. It's a very simple s interface. It's, it's, it's almost so simple that I'm, I'm sort of surprised by it. You know, it's like I expect it to be more complicated. Some great tectonic forces cracked the pavement like an eggshell. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. Oops, not caps lock tab. Okay, what do we got here? Mail collection box. The Poste L'Aventurier mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. <laughs> Good mail delivery box. The box seems happy. Eat shit, pig, fucked by the cun, and Saint G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore, and Bez set mailbox also. Bez set mailbox, that means fuck this mailbox. Beze is to fuck in French. Uh, yes, okay. I feel you, mail collection box. Been there, post l'aventurier mailbox. Been there. Hmm. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankful even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. Huh. So we just got healed. We didn't have any damage here, but we just got healed by talking to a mailbox. I don't know if that's something we can take advantage of in the future. You know, it's sort of like when you're playing like an old Final Fantasy game and there's like a healing spring. <laughs> Except it's a mailbox with graffiti on it. Right. Um, wait though, let's, let's try and stay focused here. Finding solutions to problems. We talked to this guy. Is there anything else over here that I can... Can I get down over here? Okay, there's, there's stuff here, there's stuff. Can I see that? A bold slo slogan, Humanox covers the truck. This is the traffic jam of trucks. What's this? Horseback Monument. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revaca, uh, Ravachol, I guess. I'm not sure. can't remember how we pronounce this. Son of Philippe II, the opulent father of Philippe IV, the insane. Okay, we have a fairly high chance for an encyclopedia check here. What did this king do? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philippe was known for his profligate... Profli profligacy. 
I don't know that word. I feel like if I pronounced it right, I would know what it meant. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the, the suzerain of Revacol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the end anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. I already managed to blow through the entire national treasury. Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth, Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Orum. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon instead of a bed like a normal person. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. Oh, what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry, he was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. So he was addicted to nose candy, a bloated druggie? That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Okay. Well, we know what nose candy is. It's cocaine. Okay, where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by com communards, communards, communists, I guess. Then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue if the communards had more time they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces who restored the monument some years ago a group of liberal artistically inclined individuals designers mostly thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of revacol in the poorest part of the city the statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart like an instant f frozen in time a rare butterfly trapped in amber floating on a sea of shit. Hilarious. Yeah, I'm going to say that. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than young ironists. Philippe III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. So he got experience just by looking at art. That's cool. Not that he ever did in life, either. <laughs> Neat! Got some, got, got our fill of lore there. Oh, there's a yellow. I don't know what yellow versus green means. Maybe this is like interaction. Yep, whoa! Well, that's kind of neat. That looks useful, right? Because... We have particularly low physical instruments. Wait, didn't I? Oh, I put us. I gave us a point in endurance recently, and I think I ended up for some reason giving us a point in empathy. And I don't remember why I did that. To be perfectly honest, we're not ready to level up. Physical instrument. Yeah, cool. So, what does my current shirt do? Conceptualization. Minus, minus one suggestion. What if I just change shirts? Clothes. Oh, we've got an item here too. What's this blue oblong pen? Okay. What if I. Okay, I can just drag this over like that. It looks like god awful with the. with the. with the. Um, jacket here. Huh. Interesting. But we get plus one physical instruments. I just, I can't bear to wear it with that jacket and those gloves. <laughs> well, we look ridiculous, let's be honest. We need a plastic bag to get bottles, I think. I think that's a thing. Uh, yeah. More money. 
Uh, what's going on over here? Can we, can I talk to you? Come on. There we go. Pale driver, the small wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face. Photo, an amber type from the turn of the century as golden as her smile. So I guess we are in a time period known as the 50s in this game, so the turn of the century would be 50 years ago. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes or food money. Maybe she's your... Ah. Inland, this Inland Empire is going to get us into trouble. I have, I have a feeling this woman is not her grandmother. No response. Whoever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Well, always the voice of reason, Kim. Oh. Foreign car kept in good condition. I can't talk to any of you guys. I already went in there. Bottles inside, you could pick them up if you had a bag. Where do I get the bag? I think we need to find a bag. Now let's look around. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half naked dame on its cover. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. The book is titled Man from Jelmdal and the Wildfire. You already look at these? I don't think so. This is a book of a pate. <laughs> Hilarious. This book, you really under you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. A book about Boyadero culture. It promotes freedom and roaming upstream. And a book about the future. The government tends to read your mind using radio technology. What's your deal? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Uh, I'm not interested in a book, but... Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Okay, my name is Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register, organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I am signaling that the store is open. She nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling, but she's but but she's cold. <laughs> You're cold. Can I help in some way? Kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her? I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Oh, no, no, sir. Okay, I said that to her. I'm happy to help Mom by luring in customers. She stands upright and smiles like a little soldier. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't she be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mom keep this place running. Uh, these are not good options. I've, I've kind of kind of run, it, run myself into a to a corner here. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. Whatever. 
Uh, school, she rubs her red chilled nose. Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street, and the people there run it. They say it's a charity. Okay, I, I, I'm being forced to make a judgment here. Oh. Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquettes. That's composure. That was a composure check. Neat. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being... She looks over her shoulder. Cursed. Behind her window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Well, this is kind of interesting. Cursed in what way? Cursed in a way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. They all go. She's looking for the right word. Bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. I have I have a sneaking feeling his, the notes in his notebook are about me as much as about the case. Like, this guy's really crazy and super alcoholic and lost his gun. Uh, what do we know? Okay, yes, she chirps. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Annette looks at your shaved, prickly chin. It distinctly contrasts with the oily mutton chops that surround it. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead? Hmm. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders and burglaries or <laughs> things like that, and the works of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime or catch criminals. Weird questions, man. Why would anyone want to read about crime? Oh, that's a stupid thing to ask. Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Hmm. Mm-hmm, she tots, and it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman by the, myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you as if to find something policeman-like. Huh, well, what does a cop look like, then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover in which you see a strapping vespertine officer. She, he stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Hmm. I didn't say this. <laughs> you know, cut loose, raise hell, blow off steam. And everything's better now, sir? Sure, yeah. That's great, sir. Head, yes. Not head, child. Heads. <laughs> Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there, and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you got to be the killer to catch the killer. Isn't that very dangerous? She examines the picture of Dick Mullen. Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the, the chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir, she smiles mischievously. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Well, got experience. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to deduce something now. I'm going to do this for sure. Uh, okay. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. The cover... The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval, like in the books. Uh, so I guess, what was that? 
What was that check I just did? I didn't read it out loud. Anyway, not a big deal. Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? She, oh, I'm, I'm going to deduce something that she's about her. What do you mean, sir? She looks wary. She knows where this is going. You don't need to be worried. I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. The facade of true professionalism. He is far more intrigued by the situation than his poise reveals. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails are frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails! And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? She shoots you a suspicious glance. There were a few other... Were there any other in here? Oh, well, I'm just going to say yes. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Her hands flash with defiance. She's not impressed. Look, this is a very strange conversation to be having with a child. Uh, let's see here. She nods half provocative, half enthusiastic. I'm going to say this. Thank you, sir. I work hard. It, it was okay, sir. She still got a rebellious streak. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. Hmm, that's my composure. You think so? Fine. Do better. To do something about me. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. Lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. Wait, how do you know I'm usually not? Because you usually aren't. And I'm having a grand time. I sure ho hope you are, sir. She rubs her red nose. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar somehow. There's something you're missing. Ugh. It's a white check. We can retry it. Suggestion. Oh, let's try it. Oof. We got lucky and passed. Because you know each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. Hang on, so you know me? We've met before? Yes, I, s I stand in this spot all the time. She sways back and forth in her feet. You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir, apologizing to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Did I ever talk to you? Of course, you stopped by a few times. She looks at you intently. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Thanks, I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. <laughs> party eyes. <laughs> Uh, the lieutenant slowly, ever so slowly, realizes something. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. I'm not surprised children have seen you running around with party eyes on, he thinks. Not at all. Party eyes? You know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed, she giggles at the thought. It certainly looks odd on a man. <laughs> the swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That's probably what she meant. You were probably gurning, too. Gurning? Fuck yeah, you should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. <laughs> oh baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. I'm going to say this. We're, we're going to end this now. Glad I could help you, sir. She smiles a wide, helpful smile. Cool. Got lots of experience from that conversation. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Uh, let's go in the store. 
I feel like we're just gonna do everything till we till we uh, till we figure out what's going on here. Um. Okay. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Plaisance? Who says that, that name that way? Uh, Plaisance. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Whoa, you're crazy. Okay, before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not begging for money. Too sorry for that. So, are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched as if to give it more penetration. Interesting. Uh, we can hear her voice because she has a voice actor. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? This woman is insane. Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. Well, this woman's crazy. Yeah, fuck that. Come on now, it's not personal, it's about proper sales practice and market research. She crossed her, crosses her arms. I expect an answer. Well, then we'll say ten. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. So, I told you I'm not going to grade a human being, and then I said ten, and... Oh my god. She's immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Well, no sense in turning a mother against her child. Uh, all this pressure has made her really anxious. You know, she's been chewing her nails. God, ugh, I've told her not to do that. Such a disgusting habit. Her voice is firm. She'll get over it. Anxiety is part of life. Part of hers, too, clearly. Hmm. She can if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You're placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. What you're doing is wrong. Even I know that, and I usually don't know anything. It's interesting. Sometimes I'm finding these uh, these dialogue options. I mean, they're they're very they're very interesting, but I do find I, if I make one comment, and it's not really a negative comment, but but uh, I I am f I am finding from time to time I'm getting pushed into these. I'm sort of forced to make a moral decision about my character, uh, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I, I'd like sometimes I don't know about this one, but I, I kind of like an, uh, a fourth option that just lets me just leave it be, you know. Um, like I, I have to state it, I have three options here that are all kind of strong opinions uh, you know I guess this one maybe maybe a little bit less but I've seen a few I've seen a few where I feel like I've been kind of pigeonholed into, into answering a certain way but you know that being said I've also been a little bit uh, click happy on these dialogue options in the last little while what you're doing is wrong even I know that and I usually don't know anything Stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. All of a sudden, she exhales sharply. Her shoulders slump down. Oh no, she mutters. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. Wow. Whoa. Interesting. We haven't had a fade out like that before. At least not recently. There, she returns with a nod. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. She stops, but her mouth keeps moving. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annette. Your 
like Annette to your husband and your mother. Uh, I feel like I'm psychoanalyzing this person. I'm going to nod compassionately. Yeah, sometimes it's better to let people come to these conclusions themselves. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Uh. Yes, my husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If you were more involved in the business we're running up here, she says gloomily, no matter. Soon we'll both be off for the Grand Couron. Wait, what? Wait, Grand Couron? What's that? It's a proper place to live, one of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. Her smile is wide. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investments. Since then, he's been what, what, what you might call a silent partner. Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Hmm. Well, no point in asking that. We've already asked. That if the husband is Annette's father. Alright, I had something else in mind. The woman looks aloof. Her features must softer. Much, much softer. Occasionally she, gl she glances at her daughter's silhouette. Where is the daughter? Has she come back inside? Can I... Oh, I can't check. Uh, what if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't don't feel compelled to buy anything. She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves there? Go, be drawn. Okay, I'll take a look at them. I wanted to talk about the curse, to be honest. Farewell for now, book peddler. Interesting. Oh, the daughter's there. Okay, well, we'll talk to her again, see if she... Uh, Mountain of board games, small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wiral related merchandise. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. So this is like Dungeons and Dragons, basically. There's also a huge, a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Katuak, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Viral, Cavern of Velcrag. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? There's a box that says Viral 3rd Edition Mega Setting Supplements Module, the side panel notes of, uh, Fantastique Adventure board game, so the French spelling again. New maps and miniatures. A sticker on dis on it displays 25 real. Well, we don't have that. Price is steep, but then it's a third edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. Right, let's leave. Interesting. <laughs> Gift books and molten candy. This must be more books we can kind of browse through. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Near nearly all the titles contain the word gem doll somewhere. Rows and rows of gem dollarmen gem dollarmen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Men man from gem doll and the mammoth riders. Uh, yes, and other ones. Return to Gemdal and the <laughs> Man from Hemchel and the, Hem and the Gemdal Man. That's. God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred? And these are just other titles, so I'm not going to read all that. Is that all? Wow. Uh. Pain Threshold. It's a white check you may retry. I'm gonna try. Wow, we got lucky again. That's two lucky checks. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. What the fuck? Oh, what is this? 
Man from Gemdal, sir. Is your hand reaches towards a book with a glossy cover art of a very muscular man from Gemdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Gemdalerman lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Gemdal and the Devil Woman. Interesting. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of men from Jim Dahl novels. Well, we can't buy it. Okay. I guess it's stuff that we will buy someday when we have money. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. Hilarious. Well, at least she's not standing out in the. Oh, that, that was snow out there, I think, not rain. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Ooh, there's a rather mysterious looking curtain here. I'm also noticing this building seems to be kind of adjoined to that courtyard indirectly. The courtyard where the murder happened, I mean. Uh, a lot of books up here. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Crime fiction is a disgrace, an asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes and the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not to mention, not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of some of the books found on the shelf? <laughs> more names of books. Dick Mullen, <laughs> wait, Dick Mullen dies? Oh no, it turns out he faked it to solve a case. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Hmm, might as well. God, we just keep getting lucky. Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of the book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic hard-boiled phase. The, pre the premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his in innocence. Why does this speak to me? Could be the motifs of, an, of unstable identities and shocking betrayals. Huh. I don't know. Perhaps you're drawn to the dark and noirish atmosphere? Is it because the smoking dame in the slinky red dress on the cover is giving you a hard on? Yeah, this is the book for you. Oh, uh, well, I can't buy anything. I, to be honest, I'm I'm almost uh, it's a lot of uh. There's a lot. There are a lot of uh, books up here. Quaint picture book brochure, very colorful. It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. Huh. More lore. Shelf of biographies. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Story of Jacob Iru and Alfie Delatraz by S one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top Tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver Jacob Iru. I don't know how to pronounce that name. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to 
his life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called the Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Revachalian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of, the, of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. Really must insist you buy one of the books you're in, you're interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I didn't I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time. This time is commerce. Okay, that's funny. Yeah, she's a nervous wreck. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulin, a map of Revicol, and a rep of Martinez. Okay, so this is just map stuff. Disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, the dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. <laughs> I'm not going to read all these, um, just describing landscapes. Lost little pearls of light, tiny fires in the dark. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of lore in this game. A lot. It's like they've got a whole world going, uh, and I, I feel like this game just shows you a very, very small corner of the world that they, that the the author has made for this game. Really interesting. Wonder whether they're going to make more stuff. Connections to other worlds. Wor words past the Insu... Worlds, perhaps? Past the Insulindian. Unknown to you. You've only... You only know you've never been there. You have, you have little idea what they are. Distant stars? Gods? But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are, immeasur are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. Interesting. I think we're in Jamrock. I, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm pretty confused about the whole geography of this area. Okay. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing, a picture postcard with a building on it drawn from isometric perspective. Oh yeah, those maps are hilarious. You know when you see like an isometric hand-drawn map of your city and, and there's like all these businesses that have advertising, have advertising in it? Those are crazy. Data in the upright quarters is 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of industrial har harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Maybe we'll buy the. I guess Martinez is what we want. Maybe we'll maybe we'll see if we can buy that. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is, is the only one available. Oh, oh, good. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of tourist location that that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? Interesting. Well, I'm not going to steal it. They didn't get far. For some reason, a shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Maltinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Can I? Do I have? Does that mean I have enough money? God, I don't. I don't, certainly don't have enough money to um, find a place to stay. But I want to buy the map of Maltinez. No, it's always good to be informed of your surroundings. Indeed, indeed. So I can. A worn and torn map of the Maltinez area dating from 48. The title on top reads "Bienvenue à Revacol." Or Revachol, I think their state pronounce it when they speak in their French accents. Cool. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets, which directly, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. 
Your fingers move through the various streets across Rue de saint Gislain and Rue de saint cispar All the streets are using French format too. Over Saint-Brun saint and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For a detailed view of the map, go to your journal, then map tab. Cool. Cool. Awesome, look at that. So that's like the world map. It's neat. It's very it's kind of a very small world, but it's so dense. Like we are there's the hostel that we were in, and we've just kind of wandered around here. I don't even think we've gone down here yet. It's hard to tell to be honest. I don't even think we've gone down here yet. We've just uh we really have just barely even scratched the surface of this Martinez waterfront area. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it, I gotta say guys, it's a fascinating game, uh, you know, I partly sort of feel like I'm not getting anywhere anywhere fast. Oh, I should look at these more often, huh? Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's a really interesting game. Very, very cool. Neat too, you know, instead of just like giving you, what's this? Instead of just giving you a map, a map mode you can use, you you go and you buy a map. That's that's very cool. Uh, it's it's amazing. That just that I I guess that what I was trying to get at really was just the density of the. Uh, is he just gonna stand up there? He's not gonna follow me. Huh. Okay, what's behind the curtain? I want to see. Closed curtains. You see a uh, set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what's behind these curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing books. She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. What, do you think she's a hypnotist? She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she draws, the more she tries to draw your attention away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some of, you see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straws. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Jesus, this woman's weird. From the look of it, looks of it, this is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protect, protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And who are these Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Yeah, there's they they make reference to all these places, and we just have a map of this tiny neighborhood of like one city. So yeah, they've got a huge like you know dungeon master world going on here. Very cool. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. I'm gonna open the curtains, man. We're cops. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, a petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limit for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling, Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Man, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. Oh, I kind of have a weird feeling that someone was killed there, to be honest. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. Oh, I'm not going to say that. This is about the curse? That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for employees. I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Well, no, man, we're police officers. She's got to let us go. You do? She grabs her pendant again, vis so visibly shaken. My god, even more reason not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. No. 
I'm going. No, she raises her hand to try and stop you. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Curtains tattered with age, covered in dust. Hang before you as if taunting you. I feel like I kind of exhausted all my options with her. I'm going to ignore them for now and I'm going to talk to her because our, our rhetoric brain told us to do that. And, and we're a, a rhetoric character here. But Hello again, esteemed why are, officer. Why are you so upset? Crime, those? romance, and biographies You've of already said people. that. Interesting. It's the first time I've heard a character re repeat their uh, their dialogue in this. I just want to know what's on the other side of the curtains. I already told you. It's a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. If it's a strange room, then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? Storage room, sorry. It's just for decoration, she wa wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight lipped smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine, because this place is cursed like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to the pendant. How does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around a dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Ah, and that mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the caca demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Every, ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence as if I was unwanted here. Strange. Huh. I'm not going to say that. I don't think the curse is real. I just want you to let me in there. Most certainly not. I'm not letting you open the gates of hell. In fact, I don't want anyone who isn't familiar with the psychic arts involved in this mess. Stay away, leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. Interesting. You know what this case calls for? A paradetective. So they're up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what the what world-class perfi perfidy looks like. <coughs> Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranormal situations before. Are you sure? She looks skeptical. Don't think I haven't seen, seen charlatans before. I've returned from the void, a, a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. <laughs> You're no paradetective, you look nothing like one. You're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but you look like one. Then it keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then, rock or world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. I admit I've had my fair share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm of parapsychology is... The spectral realm is parapsychologically parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Jesus, this is crazy. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. You're part Seminese? Oh, it means our meeting could, couldn't have been a mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. Jesus. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You certain? Uh, are you certain you can keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Not leaving your daughter out in the out in the uh, in the snow. To be perfectly honest. Ah, uh, no problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. She suffers nervously. If you promise, good officer, then you you might be our last hope. On your on my honor. 
uh, investigate doomed commercial area. Thank you, sir. A timid sigh of relief, followed by a cautious smile. There's one more thing I haven't told you about. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know these things. Yes, a malignant entity that lives inside the chimney. It takes the form of a woman, a witch most likely. She or it must be connected with the curse som somehow. <laughs> yes, the chimney is part of the building's central furnace and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Whoa, item gamed. Key to the bookstore back door. Some unnatural magic, I assume. She shivers. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What's the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Neat! Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Inland <laughs> Empire. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover. Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Yeah, I'm I don't know, I, 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 I am feeling like our character is a little bit more of a logic character and a little bit less of an Inland Empire character, at least that's maybe that's just my mood. Uh, this is hilarious, by the way. Uh, I have a feeling, I don't know, maybe this is connected to our murder case. I mean, these buildings are all kind of adjoining, right? I mean, someone could, could have seen the murder or something, right? Okay, farewell for now, book peddler. Who would say that? <laughs> right. Well... Uh, we've uh, we've discovered a lot, mostly just in this one room, and in a handful of conversations. I am going to cut this episode off here, I'm trying to keep things as short as I can. Uh, but uh, very exciting, very interesting. Uh, I feel like uh, I'm getting a real feel for the pace of this game, which is which is slow. It's slow. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of talking, and I, I like that. I'm uh, I'm down with that. Uh, very very interesting. Such such a dense world. And, you know, which we can see on this. Uh, where'd the map go? Yeah, the map. I'm really happy we got this map. It is beautiful. It's a really nice, like, hand drawn map. But yeah, there's so much going on. Like, we're, like, we're what? We're in this building, I think. I think that's where we are. And yeah, there's also a door here we haven't even looked at yet. There's the courtyard with the tree. But yeah, just in this little area, we've done so much. Uh,. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more about this next episode. Uh, thanks for watching. If you uh, if you enjoy these videos, uh, well, like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Ciao.